Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia the Redhead, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We hope you're all doing well. Yeah, sorry about the break last week. We were gone for a week. Mm-hmm. Do we say why? We I, I was busy. She was busy as hell. I'm in the process of moving dumpsters. Yeah. It's been crazy. She's I'm moving tired. from the municipal dumpster into a residential a dumpster residential in a dumpster. gated community. Oh, my God. So she's going through. I was ready to go. Yeah. I certainly was ready to serve the raccoons. Yeah. But Beatrice couldn't be bothered. I was busy. So we couldn't be here I'm last sorry. week. I'm sorry. We apologize. I'm sorry. Very sorry about that. Yeah. We're here today to talk about unexpected. Those pregnant teen moms. <laughs> Girl. Heavy with child. Heavy with, with child. child. These girls are ready to go. They're ready to pop. They sure are. Now, before we get into it, we do have to remind you to please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have stupid opinions and we're not going to apologize about it. So if you're so silly, you might want to find yourself another dumpster, baby. <laughs> but if you're down to party and talk about some teen hoes mm. today, welcome to this dumpster. And if you are down and ready to party, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, <gasps> patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. Absolutely. It's the best way to support us 100%. Yeah. So if you like our content, definitely think about joining us on Patreon. Yeah. And if you are watching on YouTube, Please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because everything you do really helps us in the algorithm and that helps us to grow, which is to say, get fatter. Yeah, especially which, sure. by the way, you do look fat today. Wow. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. You don't. You're dressed in dark colors and I very am. slimming very for slim. your raccoon body. <laughs> But um, yeah, it helps us to grow. So thank you in advance. Thank you. I didn't mean it. Yeah, you did. No, I don't mean it. It just wouldn't be a podcast episode unless I body shame yeah. somebody. So I'm going to start out the gate body shame. Why not shame body shame you. me? Absolutely. I get it. Absolutely. You're clearly skinnier than me. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm just jelly. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> All right, so let's talk unexpected. We're going to go over the episode that we could not cover last week because of you and not me. Yeah, <laughs> and up. then we are also going to cover the episode from last night. Yes. I watched both me because, too. of course, I'm a professional. Me too. Girl, I took the notes. Uh, That's true. All right, so we'll just get into all the couples. So we start with Lily and Lawrence. They were a new couple added to our repertoire i, I mean, suppose were you as bored as i was yes so uh, why are we bringing these people back i don't know they ain't no teens Mm-mm. they ain't having no babies no we're just talking about them getting married and i don't care i do not care either at all i mean the only interesting thing about them was lily's mom who seems like a total b-i-c-t-h <laughs> yeah i mean she seems crazy. Her <laughs> and her big head <laughs> were just, just <laughs> complaining the entire time with her big fucking mouth. Like, I know. Jesus Christ, your young daughter, she's 22 years old or mm-hmm. whatever. She's doing the very best that she can as a stay at home mother to two children. Yeah. And you just breeze on into their apartment or their condo or their duplex and just start bitching. I know. So rude. She's super critical. I think it was last week episode last week's episode. Lily was talking about how her mom tries to control her parenting style because Lily wants to do the typical millennial Gen Z uh gentle parenting. parenting? Yeah, gentle parenting. Yeah. It's totally a trend right now, but I mean I'm totally gonna do that when I have You're kids. gonna do gentle parenting? Yeah, but you know, better than some of these other well i mean there's the difference between like gen x and boomer parenting where yeah. there's a lot of screaming and throwing of and objects beating. and potential abuse <laughs> versus like coddling and everybody gets a right. trophy and everybody's a winner yeah no i'm not which has created the gen z gen alpha situation that we got going on right now <laughs> A little bit. Okay. But yeah, like her mom's just super critical of it because she lets her kids scream and destroy her house and she doesn't really correct them or whatever. But I'm like, mom, shut up. Yeah. I I'm the kind of person I'm like, don't tell me what to do. Don't fucking yeah. tell me what to do. I had these kids out of my own body and I'm not living in your house, lady. Exactly. 
But she's also not driving, which is weird. Although I didn't mm-hmm. get my license until I was 28. Oh, my God. <laughs> you were old. <laughs> well, I was living in Hawaii up until then. You don't drive in Hawaii? Well, people do. But like the bus system is oh. so fantastic. And it's just That's on fair. an island, honey. Just buses going around yeah. and around and around. In a circle. <laughs> I didn't really need a car. Oh, my so God. when I moved to the mainland... I had to get my license. I was very scared. Damn. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I don't blame you. I didn't get my license until I was old either. Your daughter actually had to teach me how to drive a really? little bit. Yeah. I was 20. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm no judgment to Lily or whatever. I judge her because if you have children and well, you're home with those children and you don't have a car that you can drive legally to take them to the hospital or to the ER clinic, that's a problem. That's true. But she probably depends on everybody else in her life. And Lawrence, he's the sole provider. He's working all the time while she's staying at home, which is totally fine. But then now they're planning this wedding mm-hmm. and they got to get married in three months because their dream venue opened up and they got to get in. I'm right sorry. Away. I don't think Lawrence has a dream venue. I think, Lily, you're the one who has a dream venue. Uh-huh. And it's going to cost $15,000 just for the venue that doesn't include, I don't know, all the, all the other things, the bells and whistles that go along with that. So she wants to save $30,000. In three months. And he's like, how about $20,000? <laughs> She's like, how about thirty-five? dollars Could not be me. Mm-mm. I got eloped. You married yeah, us. I did marry you. <laughs> I was the officiant. I, I am a minister. You are. Thank a minister. you. But I got married in Colorado, and in Colorado, you don't have to have an officiant. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So we just got our license. We went into the mountains with my daughter, your wife. Yeah. We married ourselves. We had our own vows. That's perfect. And it was wonderful. See, you don't need a big old shebang. I would never pay like top dollar lots of money for a wedding. No way. Absolutely not. I, I put know. that on a down payment on a house. Exactly. I put that in some sort of an interest bearing account. I would not spend it on a wedding, but like far be it from me. I mean, I'm a boomer. To each their own, I mm-hmm. guess. And Lawrence does not seem excited at all. They've been engaged for like a couple years too. So I'm like, I'm side eyeing him a little bit. But what I don't do know. you mean? What kind of conspiracy you got going on? I'm just like, are you, like, why aren't you wanting to commit? Commit, you know what mm. I mean? I mean, I guess he is committing because he's providing for these kids yeah. and whatever. And like, he does have a kid with her. You think he's a cheater, don't you? I'm kind of. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sussing him out. Him? Yeah, my fake psychic prediction is okay. that he's kind of cheating. Mm. I don't know. They just seem weird, but I'm like their storyline's so boring otherwise. Yeah, very, very, very snore inducing. I didn't. I thought it was weird though that Lily's mom says she's like kind of against marriage i guess because she's been engaged to lily's stepdad for like 16 years or something Mm -hmm. and she's divorced from she's not divorced well no like they're separated for the last 20 years from lily's biological dad but they're not legally divorced right because to get divorced would be expensive that doesn't make any sense to me i don't understand like all you have to do is split your assets Mm -hmm. maybe there's a little bit of alimony and maintenance but like if you're already living on your own and paying your own way without your former husband, like then just get a divorce. Yeah. Very strange. I don't understand why they're holding on to that. It kind of reminds me of that couple from You, Me, and My Ex. Do you remember the military spouse lady? Oh, yes, yes. What's her name? I and don't the remember. two guys. I can't remember yeah. them. But it kind of gives me that same like weird vibe. There's something weird with that mom, mm. I'm sure. And then we have Anaya and Daquan Day Day. Oh, my God. Girl. And last week... They went to their 4D ultrasound of the baby with their entire fucking family. <laughs> like literally 30 people in the ultrasound room. Like, I don't know. Times have changed since the 90s when I had my baby. Girl. But like I went into the room. It was just me and my man. <laughs> and we had an ultrasound and we got the fuck up out of there. Like, but I wouldn't have never imagined to bring like my entire family into the room no way that's kind of cute too i mean it's sweet that they both have really supportive families and that they want to be there for them and everything but i'm just like that is so extra (laughs) that is so crazy day day is also just falling asleep (laughs) in the ultrasound room and like what are you doing my guy apparently that's what he does like if it gets a little quiet or a little boring he's automatically nodding off yeah on a sleepy time and apparently he does that on all of their prior Mm -hmm. appointments he did that when she went to the er yep. for high blood pressure when she needed him the most to talk to her he starts nodding off <laughs> starts and going to <laughs> z-town like what the fuck weird i mean for as insufferable as anaya's mom is ashley at least she has kind of like the right 
thing going on with Day Day. Like she's totally side eyeing him. She doesn't trust him. Mm-hmm. She thinks that he's probably going to be a deadbeat. He might be. Probably. I mean, with the way he's acting right now, I'm like, mm. um, all these 16 year olds are going to be deadbeats. Oh, for sure. 100%. <laughs> 100%. But then the next episode this week, they have her baby shower, Anaya's baby shower. Well, you forgot the preeclampsia and the oh, visit to the... She went to the ER. Well, but the mom, but like Anaya's mom That's didn't right. want to take her to the hospital because she's like, well, she's pregnant. Like, it's painful. Yeah, like, get I over it. I think p- pregnancy is supposed to be <laughs> painful. I mean, it's uncomfortable. You got uh-huh. a big old human sitting on your bladder and that sucks sometimes. But yeah. like, she's talking about having pain in her belly, pain in her butt and... Apparently, she had preeclampsia or she was trending towards preeclampsia. Well, she was having like super high blood pressure, which is indicative of preeclampsia. And the doctors were like, yeah, you have that. So if you have high blood pressure again, you're probably going to have to be induced so we Mm. can get the baby out safely and all that jazz. But they sent her home after the ER. But I'm glad that she went because her grandma made her go. Because now she knows what she has and her stupid mom is mm-hmm. like, oh, I, I never researched that. I don't know what preeclampsia is. So that's why I didn't How know. How do you not know what preeclampsia is? I mean, especially if you had a baby, a bunch of babies yourself. I don't understand how you never heard of preeclampsia. It doesn't make any sense to me. Well, and you see the preview for next week and she's in pain again. Again. Like writhing around on the sofa. Yeah. And she's like, I think I have to go to the hospital. I'm sorry. If that's my child I, and I've already taken you to the hospital and you're like trending towards preeclampsia, like the minute you say you're uncomfortable at all i'm taking you to the hospital exactly but her mom's kind of a bitch Something's too i don't really yeah. like her that much mm-hmm. and then we have this stupid baby shower oh my God. that they're planning <laughs> and i think her mom's the one that orchestrated it and planned it which is it, the whole thing so extra with all the snow and the blue and the, the throne and, and everything like the picture of her in day day <laughs> on the ground <laughs> what hugging, are we doing and then the picture of her in like her blue feather bikini or whatever with her big old belly on the wall i'm like like, wow i can't this is how we're doing baby showers in the year of our lord 2024 good to know i mean so when you get your baby shower like we'll get your <laughs> we'll get that together for you but like that was a lot it was super extra but they have like a deadline this baby shower starts at 3 30 <laughs> and anaya is still at home not even dressed not ready or anything she's just waiting around for her mom to get her ass over there to get her ready why i don't know i don't get it and all of her family is also hanging out waiting yeah. to go just with like Anaya. chilling like, oh my god i I, uh, I can't let me ask you something what have you ever had a friend or family member who was chronically late all the time because it seems like anaya's mom is late all the time and yeah. they're just all used to it like this is her bullshit she's gonna be an hour or two late for whatever the fuck it is mm. have you ever had a relationship with somebody who was like that i've had friends that are like that but nobody in my family is like that because i grew up like we have a time limit we got to get there on time. I mm-hmm. hate being late. Me too. I, I am early. It. I am like 15 minutes to five minutes early. Same. I make sure. Otherwise, I have anxiety. Yep. But I grew up with a woman in my life who was always late. We were always Ugh. in the car waiting for her to finish getting dressed so we could get on the road. And we were always an hour late everywhere. <sighs> I can't. Piss me the fuck off. So disrespectful to the people who are waiting for you. It's so disrespectful. And look, it's like one thing if you're like a couple minutes late every now and then. Whatever. I get it. But they were like two and a half hours late. <laughs> they were two and a half hours late because Ashley shows up to where Anaya's at, at her grandma's house or whatever and is not even ready. She brings like Anaya's siblings so she's got to get them all ready and then she's got to get Anaya all ready in her weird little mini uh, white dress thing christmas outfit Mm -hmm. Uh, but like can we talk about the mother's final look i mean (laughs) like she's getting ready and she's taking all this time but like she ends up in like some sort of a tank like a t-shirt or whatever what are we spending all this time doing just to keep all of these people waiting by the time they get there it's two hours later everybody's eating there's no festivities that are planned it is a lame ass baby shower it's super lame well and like i think it was day day's mom calls anaya at one point and is like uh where the fuck are y'all at and anaya's like 
I don't know. Like, ask my mom. She's planning it. Like, talk to her. This is my party, and nobody should be asking me what's going on (laughs) because I am the queen. Thank you. I'm just supposed to show up. So we're just raising a generation of entitled assholes. Okay. It's so great. Good to know. She's super spoiled. This is why I was kind of like, I don't know if I like Anaya that much because of this attitude that she's got. Because I'm like, you can't have that kind of attitude when you're a mom. When it's everything is about you and it's all on your schedule. Like, bitch whatever but then they show up to the baby shower she's got like a mountain of gifts which i'm like that's great i'm glad that you have a whole family and you got day to day's family that's super supportive and loving that's awesome they seem like a great family they seem great day day's family yeah not her family just no. to be clear just day day's family yeah <laughs> and oh and day day the whole entire time while she's late is having to play host right. for her baby shower <laughs> but i'm just like I and can't. as soon as she gets there her mother's like well are we going to open these presents I'm like oh my god can i just get a plate of mac and cheese please i'm like just i've got a big old baby i'm cooking over here god damn i just want to eat so they immediately set off to open a bunch of presents mm-hmm. and it's just a very wiggity whack baby shower and oh, i totally. was amazed oh yeah <laughs> i was amazed i was perplexed and then day day's mom has to go and talk to uh anaya's mom ashley and and uh, ashley just has this stank face on her the whole entire time she's <laughs> like don't talk to me like how dare you and day day's mom is asking her basically so What's going to happen once the baby comes? Like, what's your approach for Anaya, your daughter? Like, are you going to make her do the work, become self-sufficient, take care of the baby or else? Or are you going to take care of that for her? And all Anaya's mom says is basically, that ain't my baby. (laughs) With the stinkest expression on her face. I'm like, why do people got to show up in the world like that? I know. Is it so difficult to smile and be personable? You don't have to like somebody to be socially appropriate. How much does it really cost you to be a kind person, Ania's mother? Ew. I know. Super gross. I did not like the attitude. It's super immature. And I'm like, come on get a grip like day day's mom seems very nice yes she seemed very respectful and is just trying to talk from like one mom to another about your guys's grandchild well and anaya's mom doesn't want to be called a grandmother she's like i'm an auntie i'm not a grandmother i don't know anything about that grandmother life oh my god i don't i don't relate to any of this well and it's like it's just because she's so young i mean she's probably like late 30s early 40s so really? yeah because she had anaya at 17 or something like that i so guess so yeah Gosh, she's kind she of a looks young older mom. she looks older to me than she actually is and that's because she keeps her face set in that skin yeah. gas expression all the time your face is gonna get stuck that way uh 100 it already is stuck that it way it is so yeah we'll see what happens with them next episode i hope she doesn't have to get induced but it seems like she probably is gonna have to mm-hmm so hopefully well, she's okay my personal opinion beatrice correct what? me if i'm wrong and maybe share yours as well but like let's get to birthing of the babies i don't care I know. about the run-up to the birth i want the babies out and then i want to see how you kids handle it and what the parents allow and don't allow that's yeah. where it's gonna get good i don't care about the baby showers and all this bullshit no for sure but i think they just do this just for filler because they can't make a whole season i guess not i mean they could i would totally watch it yes. of like all these teen moms parenting and stuff like mtv's team mom but we'll get to it then we have jenna and jj and his large cranium <laughs> did you notice it this time because yes. i called it out last it's time it's a haircut it is a terrible it's haircut horrible. he's got some wonky little lopsided elf ears <laughs> and then there's just big old cantaloupe of a cranium like a and i feel bad yeah because i don't have any couth or decorum <laughs> that i would be calling out this young man who by the way over the course of two episodes, I'm like, he's kind of sweet. I mean, he's pretty respectful. He's soft-spoken. Yeah. He's showing up for this young man. So I'm just a terrible, awful person. Look, we're just calling it as we sees it. And he's got a very large head. He does have a very <laughs> large head. So does Lily's mom. Yes. You said it was like the Goonie. Well, <laughs> the Goonie we were going to put that on the We're going to say it, though. That's the, so mean. The Goonie who now? The, the monster from the Goonies. Though, I don't know. I never saw the Goonies. Does, it, does she look like the Goonie monster? You all tell That's me. That's so mean. Drop it in the comments if you're watching it on YouTube. <laughs> I can't. You can. Anyway, JJ and his large cranium. Go ahead. I'm telling you. And Jenna. You. Jenna has moved down to Myrtle Beach officially with Luca and JJ. And she's hosting Thanksgiving. It's her first time cooking a turkey, and um, it was kind of weird looking. But, it was. You know, 
that's cool. We all start somewhere. Mm -hmm. She's hosting Thanksgiving with her dad, her stepmom, Kathy, and then JJ's mom, Andrea, who was such a big old bitch. She was a big old bitch. But what was super curious about it was that uh, the way, what's her name? (laughs) What's the girl's name? Jenna. Thank you, Jenna. (laughs) The way Jenna spoke about her being so supportive and so wonderful. And then Jenna's father's like, yeah, I've heard so many wonderful things. And I'm just, I feel so much better in life knowing that Jenna has this motherly nurturing figure there to help her and take care of her. And then cut to the couch Uh, with um, JJ and his mom. And she's like, oh God, I didn't care about Thanksgiving. I didn't (laughs) need to go, but I guess I had to show up. And JJ's like, they're going to air this and she's like no they're not yep they like, did yes they are yeah so she doesn't give a shit about jenna Mm-mm. she doesn't give a shit about her family yeah she thinks luca's a bad child yes she's like i don't mind kids unless they're bad <sighs> like screaming all the time and luca's always got shit on his fingers and he's <laughs> spreading it everywhere and he's crying all the time and yeah i'm 51 years old bitch and i'm over it <laughs> i've done my time i know so she is not into these people not at all she's not even into jenna which is so weird because she was saying like i never pictured my son going after a girl with a kid and you know it's kind of weird and luca's gross and i don't want grandkids <laughs> at all gross. like she's such a she's bitch like, i raised all my kids i'm not out here trying to be a grandmother i do do not want grandkids unlike myself just to, so I know. that you know i don't know if you know Every that day, about me she's begging like, for i it. would love to have grandkids yeah. but like some people don't want to be grandmas and grandpas and well and it's like look i respect your honesty but like maybe just be a little bit kinder <laughs> like mm-hmm. you're on tv you don't look good lady Mm-mm. like i thought you were gonna be nice you look kind of pretty but like now you're just a big old bitch yeah it and was you gotta unnecessary face. to say all that super judgy and jenna's gonna see that mm-hmm. and jenna's dad the former marine is also going to see that it's going to cause problems if JJ and Jenna end up together. And I do have a feeling that they might. Oh, for sure. Well, you said she's pregnant with another baby by JJ. They now. already had a baby. Yeah, They already had a baby. In now. the year of our Lord. Yes. So, 2024. Yikes. They have a baby. I'm pretty sure they're like getting married. I think they're engaged now. So like they're serious and that's great and stuff. But I'm just like, damn, Andrea, you're a bitch. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at the prior seasons. They've had tell-alls. So I think they're going to have a tell-all for this season. So really? this footage is totally going back. Awesome. To her family, and I can't wait to see it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Jenna's making her weird turkey with the stuffing underneath the skin, which I'm just like, do people do that? I don't know if they do that. I know they put butter beneath the skin. That's what I, I do. you. But did you notice that she's like buttering up the raw turkey and Luca's helping with his fingers in the butter and the mm-hmm. raw turkey? And then when it was done, she did not immediately wash her hands, nor did she wash Luca's uh-huh. hands. He did have dirty motherfucking hands. I he did. was putting that in his mouth mm-hmm. and spreading them everywhere. It was really unsanitary. It was really Beatrice. gross. It's I saw gross. that. I'm like, I'm judging you a little bit, but you're young. She so. doesn't know. You're dumb. It's okay. But anyway, Jenna's parents arrive and they're like there first. And then Andrea arrives and then they all kind of sit down for dinner. And this is where Jenna's dad, I love him though, low key. He's like, so what's about this promise ring? We got to talk about that. What are you promising? Exactly. (laughs) Specifically, what are you promising? And Andrea, mom of the year, is like, oh, I didn't know about the promise ring. Nobody told me about a promise ring. Mm, Well, why would they tell you? And then they asked JJ, and he did some word salad, (laughs) young man bullshit. It didn't make any sense. I still don't understand what you're (laughs) promising, but okay. I mean, he basically was like, yeah, it's just like, we've had so many trials together. We've tried to be together. And so now it's just like, I'm promising to stay with her, you know? (laughs) <laughs> and all the parents are like wow that's so respectable okay. oh my god it's so amazing you're such a young uh mature man and mm-hmm. i'm like is he <laughs> he's not promising he's anything. scared shitless in this moment and just pulling words out of his ass that don't make sense to me they, like none of that made sense to me none of it made but sense. god bless you young man yep and then Andrea's like, why didn't you tell me about it? And he's like, because you don't talk to me. <laughs> and I'm like, there you go. Oh, yeah. So that's what's so weird is like how Jenna has such a close relationship with Andrea when she doesn't talk to her son. I don't think Andrea doesn't. I don't think she likes Jenna at all or her her kids. So I'm like, this is bizarre. Mm-hmm. Fake ass family. Yes. And it's foreshadowing lots of drama, which I like. I mean, which I, I love do it. Like. Yeah. I would like to see more of them as opposed to like Lily and Lawrence because I don't care about yeah. them. Yeah. Agreed. Then we have Emily and Nate. 
and they're a hot mess express. Why does she trigger me? Why do I get triggered? Because she's, she's got rude. a little baby voice mm-hmm. and she's never really yelling. But there's something about her that is so innately manipulative and bullyish towards what's his name? Nate. Nate. Yeah. That really gets under my skin. Oh, yeah. She's a total bully. She's always putting him down, saying he's immature and stupid. And, and I'm like, uneducated. And why don't you know that? And yeah. I'm like, this kid out of all the other kids has the one is like the one that has the most shit together besides maybe JJ because JJ has got his apartment Mm -hmm. and he's like making money for Jenna and stuff like that. But like Nate quit his bike racing thing and got a job and he's like stepping up to the plate. Like he's trying to be there for you and you're being a bitch. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Like when we see him this episode, they're going to ice cream after her 39 week appointment and Nate's telling the camera, yeah, Emily didn't want me there. So I'm just going to take her to ice cream afterwards. And then Emily tells the camera, no, I wanted him there. I really wish he would have come. So who do you believe? I believe Nate. I believe Nate as well. I mean, just the way that she talked to him on the couch, too, where she's like belittling how he feels. Like mm-hmm. he's like, you are always yelling at me. And she's like, no, I'm not. Shut up. I'm like, yeah. Ooh. And the worse she gets in the way that she talks to him, like the squintier her eyes yep. get and she smiles and she lying. looks like a crazy clown. Uh-huh. She's not a nice person. And I hate to say that because I'm passing judgment on somebody who's like not fully formed yet and is just obviously a product of their atmosphere and their upbringing. And then we meet her fucking weird ass father who uh, only cares about getting in Taryn's pants. I know. Like, okay. This is all starting to fall into place. So I don't want to judge her, but there's just something because I think he's so sweet. Yeah. And he seems so gentle. And like he's going to need to learn how to be a daddy. And he's not going to know how to do it right out the gate. But neither do you, Emily. No. But I just feel like he's not going to be given the space and the time to learn how to be a good daddy. But he's going to want to. Of course. And she's going to trample all over him. She's going to break his heart. He's going to become a hardened person, potentially a drug user like his father. Oh, my God. I Nate, hope don't not. don't be a drug user like your daddy. Don't do it. I know. I feel really bad for him a little bit. And she's just, I know she comes from like a broken family structure like she has no relationship with her mom her dad's always working all the time and he's so weird he's so unemotional and talking about how hot Taryn is I'm like why why are we doing this and he's like slouches yeah. he's got this dumpy body I'm body <laughs> shaving again <laughs> he's also got a big head he does have a big head and I'm square. just like I mean my guy yeah. I mean focus on your family what I was worried about though was Emma telling him, Emma Lee telling him that he's going, she's going to go live with Taryn and yeah. Nate once the baby comes. And I'm like, who is this young boy, though? Uh, for real. And if your dad is gone all the time, like, is he a trucker or something? So if your dad's gone all the time, is there another woman in the house? Like, mm. who's going to take care of this young man? Right. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe an aunt or a sister or something, but... I don't know. It's very weird. Their whole family structure is fucked up. And the dad, I thought, was going to be like more emotional when she told him, I'm going to move out. But he didn't, he didn't even care. No, he, like, he just oh, okay. focused on Taryn. Which is so I'm sorry. Weird. I'm a human. And she's hot. And she's got a nice ass. She's got a big ass. She's got fat ass. Ew. It's <laughs> like, okay, dumpy McDumperson. I know. Ew. And then he's like trying to Ew. scandalize the kids. He's like, what if we dated? What if uh, I dated his mom? And Emily's like, ew, Todd. That's so gross. Ew. <laughs> but then they go out to like a lunch date. And the dad pays for Taryn. And he's and- sweating so hard. And his face is tomato red. Because he has no game <laughs> whatsoever. He has a boner. He, d- he does a little, <laughs> little micro peen chubby little pamper peen chubby and he doesn't know what to do yeah. about it and Taryn is just so beautiful just trying to talk about grandkids and he doesn't know what to do it's super weird very awkward what if they started dating though that would be wild that would be wild but like he's so good she's gonna see the footage in the tell-all and oh, she's yeah. gonna be so uncomfortable and the, <laughs> the tell-all like, oh, host is gonna be like yeah. what do you think about Casey thinking you're hot and she'll oh, be like mm-hmm, I'm seeing someone <laughs> It's called my vibrator. Yeah. We're very happy together. Yeah. Don't need anybody else. Thank you. Oh, God. It's so terrible. And I just, I can't help but think about Emily and Nate and like how they fucked each other after two months. Now they got a baby. I'm like, how are you going to raise a baby like that with this weird family and Taryn, who's also a single mom with a bunch of baby daddies? I'm like, this is all a mess. It is a big mess. I think the most responsible person <sighs> trying to show up in this weird ass family is Taryn. I can see a world where Taryn ends up being the primary caregiver and teaching Emily how to be a mom and getting really pissed at Emily, though, for the way that she treats Nate. Yep. 
Yeah. She's going to see it firsthand. Yeah, they're going to be, be fighting. Like, Stop bullying my kid because mm-hmm. he's doing his best. He's doing the very best that he can. He is. Uh, and he's soft spoken. He's a sweet young man. He is. Oh, and then last but not least, we have Graham and Kaylee. Yeah. And they were kind of making me sad this episode because Why? I'm just like, because they're so young. They're mm-hmm. so dumb. I kind of feel bad for Graham. Because I feel bad for him. I feel like ugh. this boy is clinically depressed. Yeah. He has lost. 15 pounds in a month yeah he's got bubble guts and he's Barfing. throwing up all the time because he's got acute stress and nobody's helping him and no. his 42 year old mother who looks 62 years old i was just blown away that's what that you call a cigarette mom years old. i'm like holy shit anyway mm-hmm. like she doesn't seem to give a shit that her son is sick over here and needs to see a doctor maybe she took him to a doctor i don't know but like something is wrong with graham i mean he's just totally depressed and stressed and then kaylee is thinking that he's just making excuses all the time like granted he should be trying to show up to some of the things like i guess he's been blowing her off like on all of her appointments didn't see her for her birthday like hasn't really been present during her pregnancy however he had to quit football right he's gotten a job so he can try and support kaylee and her baby it's like he is trying and Mm -hmm. he's 15 right like can we have some grace here absolutely he does not know that he should be showing up in all of these no, ways because he's, a he's not a grown ass man and right he maybe didn't have that modeled to him in his life with his mother who right. i think has a boyfriend or something he's got a stepdad or who whatever knows? so like he's not going to just automatically know how to treat somebody and show up for them especially when he is struggling as much as he is oh yeah and he talks about it in this episode like when i got kaylee pregnant i felt like a total fucking failure and like I've disappointed everybody I knew because I got this girl pregnant and I'm just like ooh, yikes and then when they're retelling the story of how they all found out Kaylee was pregnant Mandy her mom calls Becky up like a million times because Becky's napping or whatever mm-hmm. didn't so sleeping it off yeah she's sleeping it off totally <laughs> the narcotics mm-hmm. um and so <laughs> Becky finally answers her phone call and Mandy's sobbing over the phone she's like Kaylee's pregnant and Becky had no idea Becky says she feels bad and feels like she's the one to blame she should feel bad she's the one who let Kaylee come over repeatedly and there was nobody there no adult there so of course these two young hormonal kids are banging it out in your house why is this a surprise to you and did you even teach him about condoms no is anybody talking to these kids in rural west virginia i don't know where they're from kentucky uh, kentucky about um birth control no yeah, a bunch of stopping <laughs> yeah please refrain yeah i'm refraining <laughs> no but for real i like, have no respect for that i don't either well becky's acting like so stupid because she's like well i'd be gone and i'd come home and, and kaylee would be there and i don't know how long she'd been there for so they probably were having sex i'm like would wouldn't you call mandy up and be like um your daughter's sneaking out to my son's house like i i wasn't home i don't know what they've been doing like that's what i would do if i was a parent absolutely and out of everybody In these two families, I have the biggest problem with Becky Mm -hmm. because although Becky is sitting on the couch and saying, like, I don't think anybody understands the sacrifices that Graham is making in order to have this child, like, it's still hits me the wrong way because he's not cooking a baby inside of Mm -hmm. his child body he's not going to be the one who have to give birth he's going to live 30 minutes away while she takes care of this child wakes up with this child feeds this child and so i'm glad graham has a job but that's what you have to do when you have unprotected sex hello and nobody taught him how to do it any differently and becky we blame you Mm -hmm. and now you're not teaching him how to show up for kaylee and going to the baby shower which we see that he's not even going to show up for that didn't show up for her birthday isn't checking in on appointments and things of that nature like becky parent your child bitch no i'm like this be is a, better a child mom. but she's too busy smoking cigarettes and mm-hmm. shooting up heroin That's or right. something meth, because meth it's kitchen, like what are you house. doing somebody's got some meth in this house oh totally and it's becky for sure and i just i don't know i feel bad for all of them i feel bad for these two kids because they don't know what's coming they have no idea even kaylee kaylee's like so happy-go-lucky like whatever it's not that big of a deal but i'm like 
honey, once you actually have that kid and you have to get up for it every five minutes when it's crying and you got to change its diapers and you got to let it suck on your titty, like it's going to be really hard and you're a child. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They just made me sad this episode. Yeah, it is sad. I feel bad for Kaylee. I feel bad for Graham. Mm -hmm. And I have anger for Becky and Mandy. Mandy, Mandy, you've coddled this girl this entire time. Like when they're outside with the chickens and that pig with the tusk and everything. Oh, yeah. Scary. You know, a pig will eat you. Oh, yeah. Did you hear about that 85 year old man who went out to feed his pigs and happened to fall into their pen and they ate him? There was literally a serial killer who did that too. That l- would kill people and then feed them to the pigs. I thought that was Hannibal Lecter. No. One of those. Well, yeah, one I mean, but like too. a pig will eat you. I'm just saying. Yeah, putting it totally. out there. If you yeah. got a pig, be careful. The more you know. That's right. But when they were out talking Mandy and Kaylee, like the way that she talks to Kaylee is like they're friends. Yeah. It's very lateral. It's not mother to it's child. Not a and anytime she tries to take a tone of authority with Kaylee, Kaylee rolls her eyes. Kaylee laughs at her. She does not take Mandy seriously at all which means mandy you fucked up too with your parenting yep, exactly 100 percent. i uh, like i noticed that from the first couple episodes i'm like you don't you're not being there for her Mm-mm. even she's traumatized this, though oh uh, mandy yeah oh yeah because she was groomed she seems like a woman who's in a constant trauma response to me totally yeah she's very weird well like even on the couch she's like interrogating kaylee about like where her and graham were having sex because she's like you weren't doing it at our house right and kaylee's like no she's like so why were you doing it over there? Was it easier? She's like asking all these questions like as if you don't know. Right. And I'm like, why are you so not present in your daughter's right. life? Like you knew she had this boyfriend for three years. Like did you really think it was all that innocent? Boys are never innocent. N- a lot of girls are and never girls not are innocent, innocent either. So. But like I mean teenage boys, it's like that's that's what my parents always told me. Like you mm-hmm. never get to hang out with boys alone. Like that was a thing. Lucky for me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't need that. You did not want to. I didn't want that. No. So but it's just I don't know. I just these parents yeah. piss me off. Yeah, All the of them. Problem starts with them. And now this is the product of your unconsciousness and your inability to learn how to be a good parent. And so yeah. now we have these fucking kids who are going to be terrible parents to their own kids yeah. unless they take it upon themselves to learn how to be good parents. Do we think they will? No. No. I do not. Uh uh-uh. uh. I do not. Well, and isn't there a thing that says like when you have a kid, like your age kind of stops right there? Or like sometimes when you're like young like that, yes. w- before your brain's fully developed, you're kind of yes. stunted in this age. Yeah, there for are a really few things time. that will do that. Yeah. Um, one of them is like acute trauma, mm-hmm. also like heavy drug use. Yeah. And I guess this, if, if yeah. this is something you've heard, but like, yeah, you're, you're basically stunted, yeah. arrested development from the time you experience that trauma. And guess what? Having a child out of your 15 year old body <sighs> is going to be traumatic. It's going to be a beautiful thing. The choirs of angels will sing because a baby comes into the world, but it's going to be trauma on your body and in your life. Yes. And so, yeah, the brain is going to do what the brain is going to do. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So Kaylee's just going to be kind of stuck in this moment in time and like i don't know how much graham is is really going to show up for the he kid he doesn't know how to he doesn't even show up for himself he no. doesn't know how to i feel like he's just going to abandon her because oh, yeah. it's just going to be the easiest way for him because that's what a lot of guys do they just kind of you know they're like oh out of sight out of mind yeah but you know he feels to me like he has a real sensitive nature Maybe. Um, we could say an empathic nature maybe but like he feels things so deeply that it is expressing itself through acute anxiety and also through these physical problems in his body yeah which says to me that he feels this very deeply so i can see a guy like graham 15 years old now but like when he's 25 he's gone off to college maybe he's abandoned kaylee and the child like coming back around and trying to make it right because he seems to have that kind of a sensitivity compass which is for me to say like i think i like him yeah i like him and i i hope hope that they can figure this out it's not going to be a relationship it's it could be some cool co-parenting though as they get older maybe yeah because they'll grow up together and Mm -hmm. stuff like that and and sometimes when like you have the kid it kind of changes you too and it makes you grow up a bit so maybe that'll happen for him but i don't know i i like him and jj probably the most out of all the guys on the series so far i'm like those ones seem the most well-rounded, although JJ, I forgot to mention, him just banging Jenna, raw dogging yeah. the whole entire time. I'm like, what I are we doing I forgot about that. He's on what the couch with his doing? mean ass mother and he admits that they've never had safe sex. Ever. I'm like, what are we doing? Do we not know about STDs? Do we not know about this kind of stuff? Or 
pregnancies. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, children, she knows that. I mean, she should know that. I don't understand this. It doesn't make any sense. But no wonder they have another kid yeah. together. Mm-hmm. Big yikes. And then we have the preview. So we have um, Graham and Becky not showing up to the baby shower. Which is so lame. That's so, uh, it Becky. It is so hurtful i mean that should have been a priority becky you suck cigarette mom yep the worst and then we have lily's dad brett coming into her life because i guess he wasn't around so this is the guy that never divorced the big-headed mom yeah big-headed mom went to uh <laughs> be went on to get engaged to some other dude uh-huh. so this father is yeah. coming back into lily's life after neglecting her for Many, many years trying to make amends, missing some teeth, though. Yeah, because he was on meth or something. So he's a druggie, probably, totally. right? Yeah. So okay. maybe that's why it was too expensive, because he was a fucking druggie. Yeah. I don't know. And then we have Anaya not feeling good again. It's probably the preeclampsia. She's got high blood pressure. She might have to be induced, and she's got to go to the ER again. And her mom doesn't seem overly worried about it. Of course not, because pregnancy's supposed to hurt. Right. <laughs> In your ass. <laughs> I guess. Wild. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Well, are you enjoying this? Yeah. It's kind of a slow burn. Like I want a little bit more Mm -hmm. drama. Yes. More trash. I don't know why Lily and Lawrence are on here. Yeah, I feel like there were other couples that were trashier in prior seasons that I've heard that could have come back on. Or we could just spend more quality time with some of the existing couples that we have because a lot of this is a dumpster fire. Totally. Um, So we're going to continue to cover this, but we do want to let you know, raccoons, that welcome to Plathville, which, by the way, is one of the anchoring reality shows that these two raccoons absolutely love. And it's one of the reasons we started this cursed podcast in the first place (laughs) sister wives and welcome to plathville so plathville is coming back july what was it 17th is the tuesday whatever that is the 16th yeah and i cannot wait oh my god i cannot wait because as you know ethan and olivia are getting a divorce Ah! we know that kim and her Oh, ass oh left Barry, moved to Florida, yes. is living with that alcoholic pilot teacher. Ooh. And we have Micah in a new relationship with some real estate agent He's in living Florida. with a woman. A woman. Oh, my God. Apparently a woman. I mean, I guess. And we have Mariah, who has released music. A lot of music. And has alluded to <laughs> the fact that it's not about Max, her first boyfriend. So maybe there's a dude we Another might be guy? introduced to. Oh, my God. And then, of course, we have Isaac, who I love. He's made. Favorite. He's so handsome. And Lydia, who yeah. is turbo Jesus intensive. She's but also singing. She's also got a man. She's got a man. She's got a man. Yeah. And it's not Jesus. No. We did ask. Yeah. It's not Jesus. Yeah. So I am so excited. My about God, that. I can't oh. wait. And then we heard rumblings through the Sister Wives universe, and in specific from Cody Brown's nephew, who hates him. Oh, really? Cody Brown's nephew I mean, hates you know Cody that? Brown. Well, he's one of us. Yeah. He's a raccoon like us. We hate him too. He apparently, I don't know if it was on a podcast or how this happened, but he apparently announced that Sister Wives is coming back in August. <gasps> my birthday month. So Plathville, July. Oh my God. August, Sister Wives. Perfect. And then you and I, we're going to be solid. We're going to be set. Yeah. We are going to be so happy oh my god we're gonna get so fat just in time for the holidays you know what i hear from people though is like why plathful it's so boring well i Ugh. hear that about it's sister so wives great though as well plathful it's so good is so these people don't know how to produce themselves multi-layered we've Ugh. got evangelical fundamentalist mm-hmm. christianity we've got religious trauma manipulation we've got, um sexual things yeah. that are happening now we've got sexual not deviancy but immorality certainly with yeah. him and now we got ethan out on the dating scene oh, oh my god. god there's so many good things with plathville so, so if you haven't good. watched it there's still time yeah to go back through prior seasons by the way we are wrapping up season three in our patreon yeah listen to our so recaps. if you want to recap you can go ahead and sign up for our patreon and listen it's really fun but like maybe catch up and then launch into the journey with us starting july so are we going to continue with unexpected all the way to the end i mean we have to probably we committed but it'll just probably change the recaps a little bit if we're having 
walk in the Plathville and sister wives kind of all on our plate. Plathville primacy. Yes. Sister wives 100%. primacy. Unexpected. A side dish. Secondarily. Yeah. She's a side piece. Yeah. She's, uh, she's, she's a, our um, side hoe. That's right. She's a side hoe. <laughs> but that's what's up. That's what's coming yeah. up in the summer. And we are really excited wackoons. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons, Beatrice, before we get on out of here? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. Five. Say something nice, please. It really helps us grow the pod She's and sensitive. other people to come She's to us. Well, and I'm sensitive. Yeah. Thank you. Also, we will be back later this week to get back into Sister Wives Rewind. Yeah. We are in season four, and now we've got Cody and Mary going back. Back to Mexico, hoodie. Girl. And she's trying to make a decision about whether she wants to have a baby or not. Newsflash, it's not. No. But we have a lot of fun with that, so make sure you come back, enjoy that. And until then, please don't forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.